particle filters. Uh, uh, all right, you've seen Bayes nets. Uh, you know how to represent probability distributions. Um, sometimes, though, sometimes it's really hard to. Sometimes you have a probability distribution over some really yucky thing, like real valued space. Uh, for example, let's say that you start off not knowing where you are in the room, and then you take a, 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 a sensor measurement that says that you're uh, one meter from a wall. But the sensor measurement is noisy, right? It's got like a plus or minus of 10 centimeters or something. So OK, represent that probability distribution as a Bayes net, mister. Right? It's like we ought to be able to use Bayes' law. Like originally, I had a uniform probability distribution, and then I got some evidence. So now, what's the probability that I'm at any particular x, y location? Like, I should have heavy probability near, like about a meter away from the walls, but it should be a little fuzzy because I had that plus or minus 10 centimeter thing. So it's like becomes very hard to represent, and you're like, ah, my brain hurts. I'm a computer scientist, not a like, I don't know, even math people, their brain hurts when they think about this because, like, the room could be arbitrarily shaped, right? And so now, like, I want a probability distribution that's about a meter away from any side of this polygon, right? And they're like, the, so the math people have run screaming from the room, and the computer scientists are left all alone saying, what can we do? So the answer, my friends, is, is discrete, discretize. Um, just the way you integrate by summing up lots of little teeny slices of things, we are going to think of probability mass as, um, as sand, particles of sand. So if you think of a number line, right, you know you have the mass of each little bit of sand times the number of particles of sand adds up to one, right, because the probability always adds up to one. And we're going to sprinkle the sand all around the room. Where the robot, where we think the robot's going to be, um, and this is called particles. This is called a, a, a particle distribution, and it's beautiful because you just move the particles around, and now you're approximating all sorts of crazy distributions that are not parameterizable by any nice closed form. Um, so, for example, how? Let me show you now how we would deal with the situation where um, you have some distribution representing your current belief about where the robot is, and then you take a sensor measurement. And maybe you perform an action even. Maybe you're, like, you're trying to move forward, but you're not sure that whether, you're moving, whether your, your, your motors aren't perfect either. right? You're going to slip on the floor. And the worst thing robots do, and I think I mentioned this already when we were talking about MDPs, is like when you go from linoleum to carpet, and there's a, a gap uh, or a, a, some kind of seam there, and the, the wheels get stuck. So the, the wheels are going, and the robot's going, and then one of the wheels gets stuck, and the other wheel is going, and then the other wheel frees up, and now you're over here. And you thought you went straight ahead, but you didn't. You turned. So there's, there's motion uncertainty as well as sensor uncertainty. So what, on, what in God's green earth are we going to do here? Um, oh, we're going to do this. Unbelievably simple algorithm. Unbelievably simple. Uh, it's called uh, particle filtering, or if you want to be really fancy and impress your friends, you call it Monte Carlo localization. Localization is what, like figuring out where the hell I am, um, as opposed to navigation, which is figuring out where I'm supposed to go. Uh, localization is figuring out where you are. Um, so you take each particle of sand, and where each particle of sand is going to have an associated weight. And you start off with each particle having the same amount of weight. And we say, OK, I used to be, according to this part of this, this particle represents a possible location I could be in and the associated probability that I am there. Right? So you say, OK, if I had been in state SI and I did whatever action I most recently did, then my next state, there's some, I have some distribution over my next state. This is my motion model. Like, you know, with probability 0.9, I'm like one square ahead. With probability 0.1, I'm like veered off to the side. With probability 0.001, I like moved backwards or fell over, or, you know, something like that, or didn't go anywhere. There's some probability distribution. Um, 
Who knows? Maybe you model this probability distribution using a Bayes net. I don't care. Whatever you want, whatever your motion model is. Sample from this distribution. Okay? Pick a next state with probability according to this distribution. Now, weight that state according to how likely the observation that we just took, our most recent sensor measurement, how likely that measurement would be had we, if, if we were actually in that state. Okay? So we were in a state SI. We, trans, we're, we're gonna, we, we transitioned to some state that we're not quite sure what it is. Um, and we, we got some observation E. So here we're sampling from where we think we ended up. We're weighting it by how likely that observation would be if we had been in that state. And we do that for every single sample. And now we have a, whole, a new set of samples with some new weights. And some of the states are going to be much more likely than others. Like the ones that don't match the evidence are going to be very unlikely. So we've got a whole bunch of samples with different weights. We want to smooth out the weights now to get back to the situation where each one has, its own, has the same weight. So what we're going to do is, is uh, take this group of weighted samples and sample from it, take samples from it, where the probability that we choose each particular state is proportional to the weight that it has. So like you make all these sum to one, and then you, ch you, then you do weighted sampling from this set of samples. So you might pick one sample multiple times if it's very likely. Um, but that's OK, because next time around, you know, you're probably going to choose a different next state. So it's fine that you have multiple copies of the same state. To give you a beautiful visual uh, understanding of this, here's a movie by the most famous roboticist in the world of a little robot. And the gray is the map. The robot already knows the map at the beginning. Um, and when we start off, let's go back to the beginning here. We start off, the robot has no idea where it is, except it knows it's not inside a wall. Right? Tell your math friends to represent this distribution, huh? <laughs> right? This is like a crazy non-parametric distribution that's represented by these grains of sand scattered over the world, these particles. Um, each particle has a weight. Right now, they basically all have the same weight. Um, in the visualization, there's a green dot drawn on the particle with the most weight. Right now, it's just like random tie-breaking. Um, and these are the sensor measurements. This robot is equipped with a laser rangefinder that tells it how far to the, it's like shoots out these rays. Um, and it's noisy, um, but it tells you more or less how far away the nearest thing is. Um, it, this is actually not where the robot currently is. This is where the robot thinks it is, most likely. And as the robot moves around and gets more sensor readings, you'll see the probability mass start to cluster up. Right? At this point here, the robot has just gone past, it's gone down the hallway, past a set of doors, and now it's in some hallway again. But it doesn't know whether it's in the hallway going this way, and it's just past these doors going that way, or whether it's in the hallway going this way, or whether it's just past these doors going that way, or these doors going this way or that way. It's this crazy, beautiful distribution that reflects all the different places that the robot could be, that are places that are highly likely given where it moved and what the sensor readings were. As the robot continues to move, it will get more and more evidence of where it's located. So now there are really only two places that it could be. It goes into a room, and it sees this obstacle, and it realizes, well, there's no obstacle in that room, so I can't be there. So now it, now it knows exactly where it is. So it started in the upper right? No, it started right here. And it walked down and back and into the room. Yeah. Let's play it again. Play it again. So I'm guessing the robot start in this case started with just absolutely no idea. Yeah, exactly. It started no idea. I'm in the building somewhere. Just I know I'm in Kingsbury. Because that's the only place. Yeah. 
Well, not all robots have compasses. Because the sensor's noisy? We're getting a robot this summer, so next year I'll show you a real video from our robot <laughs> with our laser rangefinder. But laser rangefinder is like 5,000 bucks, so. Uh, anyway, so that's, I, that's particle filtering. Isn't that like the best 10 minutes you've spent? I mean, it's like this simple algorithm with this beautiful idea. Uh, it's just there's only one problem with particle filtering. Can anyone think what it might be? What do you mean? What's intense about about sampling and and? I mean, so the nice thing about particle filtering is you want you want more accuracy. You throw more particles in. If you're running on a stupid embedded robot with a wimpy little processor, you only run with like 100 particles. So it's pretty straightforward. No, that's why I love it. That's why I'm giving Frank so many hard looks in this section of the class. I, I just figured you loved it as a former math person. I don't know. Plus, aren't you trying to minimize like continuity and inertia and dance and stuff? So. Yeah, this does take that into account here with the transition probability. So no, the problem with a particle filter is that a particle filter can only ever imagine you being at a place where there's a particle. So if your space is very high dimensional, you need a zillion particles to capture the probability that you might be in all those different states. 